All right, so today we do have some work to do to uh, Tanya the Eclipse, but first we're gonna go to Cars and Coffee. It's the first Saturday of April, so we're gonna take the Jeep and go to Cars and Coffee. I'll see you there. All right, this thing is sick. What do you got in here? Supercharger. is pretty ridiculous but in a cool way actually look at this thing the discount cab I don't even know what this thing is I guess it's a CC checker or F checker C F mile who knows it has four doors on each side. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I like this guy just came out of paint. It's each one. Dope. The color is pretty sick. It's right next to a Bronco. I'm not a big fan of these. It's really sick. Take the top off. But we got some car parts that came in, so let's go ahead and see what we got. Motor mount. Uh, more motor mount. We use anchor stuff on the Skylark. We have uh, MRC transmission mount. So just motor mounts today. Okay. So I guess we're just getting motor mounts. I have polyurethane motor mounts for it, but I just got these in case because the old, they were the old owners, so I got it with the car when I bought the car. I don't know if they're gonna fit or not. I don't know if they're even the right polyurethane ones. So whenever I pull the engine next week, I'll know if uh, they're the right ones or not. But I just got these just in case. And from Rock Auto, they're super cheap. They're like five bucks a piece. So can't turn that down. And I have them, and I can just return them if I don't use them. Uh, we're gonna do door handle install. My two G's door handles on both sides are broken, so we're gonna replace those, as well as start cleaning the carpet and work on redying the carpet black. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So I've already taken out the carpet and I just buy this 50 gallon tub from Walmart so I can put the carpet inside of it. Pro Strength Carpet Cleaner, it's a great value, it's a Walmart brand. Pour this in here and try to clean out all the human juice and filth out of it. Hopefully that'll do the job and then once it's clean I'm going to uh, re-sew the parts that need to be re-sewed, just like one piece that's next to the dead pedal and then I'm going to dye it black or paint it black. All right, so it's been like 45 minutes. Look at that water. That's disgusting. So I kind of just mixed it around like this before I walked inside. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, dump this out and then rinse the carpet, see how it looks, and then I might need to do this thing again, put that carpet cleaner on it again, so I can then make it fully clean, make sure all this is nasty. Nasty stuff goes away. I just want to keep doing it until the the uh, water is, cl was, is clear after the cleaning. So I've rinsed the carpet, and as you can see, the water is, uh, I don't know if you guys can actually see, but the water is, is fairly clear. I'm going to mix it around, put some more of that carpet cleaner stuff in here. Yeah, you can see that water getting kind of uh, brown again. So the next time you guys check in will be when the carpet is clean. I don't want to bore you with just cleaning for 20 minutes, so 
Um, yeah. Well, that's brewing. Uh, I said I was gonna do door handles, but I can't do door handles. Let me tell you why. There's an electrical problem. That's the main reason this thing sold for so long, I'm pretty sure. Also, it's a piece of shit. Um, but uh, there's an electrical problem. I disconnected everything, pretty much, or I'm about to do it today. So I can't roll up the windows. These are power windows, so I can't roll them up without having any power. Electricals don't work, therefore I can't roll up the windows, therefore I cannot do the door handles. Instead, I'm gonna open up the engine bay here and drain all the fluids and pretty much get it ready so next weekend I can just get the crane out and pull the 420A. First, a uh, quick lesson on lowered cars. You need planks to get it up high enough where I can slide in my jack. I wish I had a lower profile jack, but I don't. This thing is so low and it's unibody, so I can't just jack it up under the floor, the footwell, or else I'll just damage the, the body. So I'm gonna try to roll it up on these planks, and hopefully that's enough. If not, I'm gonna stack another plank on top of it and then roll it on top of that. So watch me have fun pushing this 3,000 pound car up some planks. So the wood planks are in, and as you can see, it's just enough clearance to get the uh, the jack right under there. So I'm gonna jack it up, put it on jack stands, and we're gonna drain some fluid. First thing I wanna do is take out the radiator. So I'm gonna drain the radiator fluid. Just do it by using the pet caulk that's on the passenger side. It's on the bottom. Move the wiring loom as well as the coolant lines that run to the radiator. Pull it out, and then the next thing I'll do is be draining oil, transmission fluid, and uh, stuff like that. As you can see, that's not very good looking coolant. Okay, besides the fact the coolant has probably never been changed since 1997, there's no bushing here. The metal's torn up too, because this dude dropped it down so low and he's an idiot. The radio looks like it's in good condition, no cracks or anything. Kind of just start taking everything kind of apart. These lines right here, I believe that is air conditioning. Just all these lines right here, kind of clean it up and get ready to pull the engine straight up and out. But I'm just gonna kind of go at it and give you guys a time lapse. Jesus, this car just keeps getting worse and worse. Look at that. There's a crack the size of the Grand Canyon in the manifold. This is pretty much done, at least the stage I want it to be at. This thing needs to dry, it's soaking wet. But as you can see, the gray looks pretty brand new. There's still some dirty spots, the high use areas where the feet go. But I think it'd be all right. Maybe tomorrow I'll soak it in some stuff a little bit more. But it changed dramatically. Um, it's pretty good change. I'm gonna dye it black anyway, so not gonna be a big deal to cover up those areas with it black. So that's done. Let's talk about engine pulling process with this thing. 
Um, everything is disconnected. Everything is disconnected. Intake manifolds off. You saw all that stuff. Harness is pretty much disconnected. There's just one more plug that won't come out that connects to uh, the alternator. It's the uh, it's one of the harness plugs that go to the alternator. It's not disconnecting, so I'll just tackle that um, another day. Axle still need to be disconnected, and then motor mounts, and then uh, then I can take out. But for the majority, everything is out. Um, here's the stuff that came out. Got some real crusty parts. I want to be um, reshooting all that stuff with black. Um, intake or er, exhaust manifold. Yeah, seeing it's cracked to hell. So maybe it's a better reason uh, so I can go turbo this thing. Battery tray. I might relocate this to the rear. Let me know if you want me to do that. Comment below or something. Um, it would be sweet if I did. But I'm not sure if I really want to go through the whole trouble. We'll see. All this stuff came out. You can have a bucket of bolts. It's so important to label where the bolts come from. Because when you put it back together, you're not going to remember. Also important to do with the horns too. So, did that. Just labeling everything. So that'll be the end of today's video. Next video will probably be pulling the engine on this thing. So stay tuned for that. Like the video if you liked it. Comment below any comments, questions, or concerns. Subscribe to the channel for more. Following all the builds of Skylark, Tanya, the Eclipse, my Jeep, ZJ, or the truck. All the builds are on my channel. So stay subscribed. And if you want to watch the videos, go ahead and watch them. Um, so, with that, I'll see you guys later. Peace.